Hey everybody, it's Troy with eBuzz Central. Today I'm going to be doing a little different video. I had a comment on one of my videos the other day. A viewer is having a hard time deciding whether he wants to go with KDE or GNOME. And he was kind of interested in what my workflow was like and what applications that I use. So that's what I'm going to go over here real quick. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. First thing I want to kind of go over is my desktop. Now, I'm not real fancy. I don't like having docs. I just like the regular old layout down here. And then my regular applications over here. I use KDE Connect every now and then. But generally speaking, I keep my phone with me most of the time. And if I get into some deep work, like for the office or something like that, I might turn it on so that I can put all my attention directly on the PC. But if you come down bottom, most of the things I have pinned down here, I use every day. My settings app, add and remove software. Of course, my Dolphin file manager. I'm in and out of it quite a bit. Then I have MailSpring as my mail client. It's a really good mail client. I've been using it for quite a while now. It just makes things easier for me to do, quite honestly. It's the best one that I've found so far. It is completely open source now. They did that earlier this year. So it kept me from using it for quite a while because it wasn't completely open source. But at the same time, I decided what's most important is for me to be able to get the work done. So I went ahead and switched to it before it was completely open source, but now it is. But if you haven't tried MailSpring, I suggest you zip on over, download it, throw it on your PC, see what you think about it. I do have to tell you, though, if you download it on something like a, an Arch distribution, you will want to install the Genome Keyring as well, because that's what's going to control your passwords. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of MailSpring. And then for my Office, I use only Office. It is not 100% open source either, but at the same time, it is a better looking alternative and I'm in front of a lot of clients on a daily basis and really it's more of an eye candy thing. So when I'm sitting in front of a client and I want to open a document up, it just looks a little better in only office, whether I'm using the spreadsheet or the presentation or using the, the document side of things. I just want to be able to sit in front of them and it look a little bit more professional. It has nothing to do with me not liking LibreOffice or the alternatives that are out there. I just wanted something that looked a little better when I'm sitting in front of a client. If you haven't tried OnlyOffice, you can zip on over and download it. They do have a version that is paid where you can set up cloud backups and things like that. The one I'm using is the totally free version. You go to their website, you can download it. It's just for desktop apps. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then I do have Microsoft Edge. One of the reasons I have Microsoft Edge on here is because my work PCs are all Windows and I have a lot of different things synced to them. So I wanted to be able to have that same sync feature on my desktop. It's work related. It helps me keep everything connected from my job along with my personal PC. I use it maybe 10% of the time. If that, generally speaking, I will be in Firefox. And that is my main browser. Now, at the same time, there are a lot of things that Firefox does right now that I'm not really in agreement with. So I am really trying to find an alternative that I can switch to that is completely open source, but at the same time, not a Chromium based browser. I've been looking around, giving a few different ones a test drive, but at the same time, until I find that alternative, I'm going to be sticking with Firefox. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, I use GIMP on a daily basis for making thumbnails. It's easy for me, makes things kind of quick. And if you've seen any of my videos lately, you notice that I've come down to a standard look for my thumbnails. I just want people that when they see one of my thumbnails, they know it's one of my videos and they can click on it and watch it without having to wonder who put it out. Um, it's pretty easy. I just go over here. Let's say I wanted to open something. Let's go to my pictures. I'm just going to do something randomly here. Just going to pick a random wallpaper, maybe the one I'm using right now. Yeah, let me go ahead and open it. And if the distro I'm looking at is a new release, I'll go over here. And I've got some thumbnail assets over here in my pictures. That's got a new release logo. I can open that up and convert it. And it brings it up. Then I'll right click over here. I want to turn this white into alpha. So I'll just go down here and go color to alpha. 
click OK. And it's a little big, so I'll just come over here to the right where it's at, make sure it's highlighted, right click, and I'll go ahead and scale that down. I want to run it down to probably about 400. Went a little too far. And scale it. And then I want to move it, so I'll click over here on the Move Tool, zip that up here, kind of get it right there in the corner. And then I want to rotate it just a little bit. Shift R. Let's go ahead and rotate that puppy. And then I want to go ahead and add some text to it. I'll come down here. Go ahead and change that to white so I can see what I'm doing. Click OK. Then just come up here and type the text that I'm looking at. Be sure to watch eBuzz Central. And then I can go ahead and adjust this a little bit. Let's go ahead and kind of off-center it. Then I want to go ahead and make it a little bigger so it's easier to see whether you're looking at the thumbnail on a phone or if you're looking at it on a big screen TV because I know a lot of people are using smart TVs to watch my videos. And then I kind of want to put some color behind it. So I'll go up here and pick the rectangle selector. Come down here and kind of find me a spot. Make my rectangle. And then go over to the fill. I'm going to go ahead and make the background black on that. So I'm going to click black. Fill that in. Then the B in. And then I'll do the same thing down here. Go ahead and pick a rectangle. Kind of make that a little bigger. And I'll make that background yellow. Fill that in. And then what I'll do is make the text black on that. So I'll just go to the fill tool and pick black. And then I'd fill it in. And then I would do that the rest of the way down. And then I would, of course, export it. And then I could put it up on my YouTube Rumble Odyssey channel. But that's pretty much most of what I use GIMP for. I will do it for some personal pictures every now and then. But generally speaking, 90 to 95% of the usage is for my thumbnails or different things that I need to do for my channel. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of GIMP, discard those changes. And then, of course, we've got GNOME boxes. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And if you look right next to it down here, I do have VirtualBox. I did have somebody comment the other day, if you use GNOME boxes, why is VirtualBox even on your machine? So I want to show you something here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and pick Add an Operating System File. And I'll go to Downloads. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Solace. Click Open. Next, I want to create. I'm going to go ahead and customize it and create. And then I'm going to maximize it. And what you're going to see here in a second is something I've been dealing with with some distributions in GNOME boxes. As you can tell, it's got a pretty slow start. And we'll go ahead and let it go through and load up. And it's loaded up to an actual login screen. Quite honestly, if you go to their website, they say it shouldn't come to a login screen. But if it does, just hit enter. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then it comes right back to the login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and put in demo, which is another suggestion. Doesn't work. So I will try live, which is also another suggestion. And it doesn't work. Even if you put in root, it doesn't work. So... You kind of got to back up, right click, I'm going to go ahead and force shut down and go ahead and delete that out of there and close. Now, if I come over to VirtualBox, which I already have Solace loaded in as storage and just click on start. Go ahead and pick start, start. As you can see, it's already went faster in those two parts. I'm going to go ahead and adjust that to full screen. And as you can see, it's loaded up. No login screen. It goes directly to the desktop. Then all I have to do is come down here, look for displays, open that up, find the right resolution, which is 1920 by 1080, pick that and apply, keep the configuration and then close. Now I can take a look at this operating system and do a video on it. So that's why I have VirtualBox as well as GNOME boxes, because sometimes you do run into a hitch. And if you do, you don't want to have to stop download an application, get it all set up, and then do the work. 
just have it there in case you need it as a backup. So I'm going to go ahead and go down and close this out. And then close. And I do have OBS, which I'm using right now to record this video. And then over here, I've got Caden Live. I had been using Shotcut for a short time, but the last couple updates on Shotcut have really been, in my opinion, horrible. Can't scroll the timeline with your mouse wheel anymore unless you hold down the Windows key on your laptop. I like to be able to just, let me open something up. Let me see if I got a video I can throw in here real quick. Let's go ahead and just drop this raw video over here. Close out. Let's put in a couple different project pieces. I'll go ahead and do my intro. And then, of course, my like and subscribe. So I'll close down. I can go ahead and drag this down here. Go ahead and find my starting point. Hey, everybody. So there we go. Find my starting point. S, cut, extract it. Come back over. Then I can slide that over. Get my intro. Drop my intro in there. Now, what I do like to do is go ahead and magnify it a little bit so it's easier for me to make cuts if I need to make them. But everything just goes really smooth. And also, I can drop my like and subscribe in there and then come over here and then I can add my fade ins, fade outs, move it on the screen. I'll show you right here. I've dropped it in. If I want to come over here to effects, go ahead and go to video effects, go down chroma key. Drop that in. As you can see, it drops all the green out of the background. And then, of course, I want to move where it's located. So I'll go ahead and position and zoom and drop that in there. And then I can come over here and make it smaller. Go to 50% and then change the location on the screen. And that moves it down. And then I can come back over here with eBuzz Central. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an independent Linux distro. It, right it runs a little rough in the preview. But once it renders, nothing's wrong with it. So that's pretty much how I use Caden Live on a daily basis. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Don't save the changes. Then, of course, I've got my screenshot utility. Then I've got Qubit Torrent because most of the time, if I can get a torrent download for the ISOs and the distros that I'm looking at, I'll use Qubit Torrent. just makes things a lot easier and much faster. And then, of course, console. And I always check HTOP every now and then. It's all caps, so I won't do that. Let's go HTOP. And then I can take a look and see exactly what's going on. I mean, with mail open in the background, with OBS running, and with this open, I'm using about 2.5 gigs of RAM. So that's pretty much, I never, unless I'm rendering video, get above three gigabytes of RAM, no matter what I'm doing, even with the browser open. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, I do have situations, by the way, where if I've got more than one window open, I really would love to have the tiling aspect that you see like on a GNOME or something like that. So what I'll do every now and then, if I need that area to work on, I'll go over here and I'll look up KWIN scripts, which is right there. Go ahead and open that up. And then I've got Cronkite, which is a dynamic tiling script. I'll go ahead and apply that and go ahead and close out of that. And then I've got the tiling action like you get on some of the GNOME distributions or the Pop! OS that you might see out there. So every now and then you've got to make adjustments to it. But that gives you the tiling aspect like you see on a lot of other distributions. And I really like it. It comes in handy sometimes. But that's just kind of a simple overlook of what I use on a daily basis in my workflow and how it goes. I've used GNOME. I've used Pop! OS. I've used different distributions with different desktops, and I keep coming back to KDE. Not necessarily for the customization, but because it's easier for me to use. What does everybody out there use? What kind of desktop environment? What are the pros? What are the cons? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.